Hi everyone, it is December 5, 2018. This anti-gun bill requires access to social media and internet search history. Uh, pr prospective buyers in New York, all over New York, upstate Long Island. I say Long Island because that's how Long Islanders say Long Island. And New York City applicants to purchase a gun would be required by law to turn over their social media passwords to accounts like Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, and they'd have to allow police to see a year's worth of their searches on Google, Yahoo, Bing, as well. Anyone renewing their permit for a pistol would be subject to this invasive investigation. Doesn't that sound great? Yes, this legislation introduced by Eric Adams, the Brooklyn Borough President, uh, he proposed the legislation with New York State Senator Kevin Barker. Eric Adams, Kevin Barker, need to be run out of town, don't you think? To talk about our Constitution, that being dead, oh, it is dead. It is clearly dead. When you have these so-called Americans who introduce legislation like this, wow. So what are they looking for? Well, they are looking for any kind of racist or discriminatory language, hate speech, which was in another article, um, if anybody has threatened the safety of another person, inquired about or alluded to an act of terrorism, or any other, <laughs> listen to talk about vague on his face, any other issue deemed necessary by the investigating officer. Wow. Well, pre-crime, anybody? You want to talk pre-crime? Um, hate speech? Yeah, I was thinking about all of the comments that I get from subscribers about Jews. Oh, you want to buy a gun? Forget about it. Just forget about it. Completely unconstitutional, but I guess we have Americans who don't care. They just love living the delusion. Oh, I still live in the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. We're so free. <sighs> delusion gets us right where we are. Yes. Fourth Amendment, dead. It's gone. This is so outrageous that I really do believe that this guy, Eric Adams and Kevin Parker, both of them, run them out of office. That's the only way that we will ever get anywhere. The federal representatives who represent corporations, oh, those Americans who love their delusion, um, they're out of reach. Local government officials, state government officials, they're within your reach. New Yorkers, get this dead in its tracks before it goes anywhere. What else do we have in New York? Oh, the police department is about to <laughs> fly a fleet of drones piloted by police officers over the skies of New York City. It's for search and rescue missions to survey inaccessible crime scenes, a hostage situation, even hazardous material incidents. The department claims that the drones will not be used for routine patrols and will not be equipped with weapons. So don't worry, New Yorkers, when you see these things flying overhead. It's not just another step before they start using these drones for routine patrols that do have weapons that begin to look into your apartments. The New York Civil Liberties Union said, well, this policy, this drone program, it doesn't do enough to balance public privacy concerns with legitimate law enforcement needs. 
The Legal Aid Society came out against the drone program, calling it part of the police department's unregulated arsenal of surveillance tools. It warned that it is a dangerous step towards the further militarization of the New York Police Department. Well, those drones, they're coming. They're coming at us. They're going to be flying all over, making sure we don't do anything that our slave masters don't want us doing. Cops now raiding Kratom dealers as government pushes new prohibition police state in support of Big Pharma. The Department of Health and Human Services, along with multiple state boards of pharmacy, have moved to classify the Kratom plant as a Schedule One drug. Oh my God, yes, because marijuana, Kratom, well, it just digs into those profits. Big Pharma profits. We can't have that. So we've got to get those federal agencies that are supposed to be representing the people, but they actually represent corporations, Big Pharma. Um, we'll just tell them to classify this as a Schedule One drug. Yes, the FDA last year came out, or earlier this year, I'm sorry, they declared Kratom to be an opiate because Kratom has similar effects as opioids. Um, though safer, milder, natural, and certainly not the dangerous opioid drugs that the FDA has proved Big Pharma to put on the market where so many millions of people are now addicted. They've died. Kratom, it's in the coffee family. And it does not have any properties of opioid-induced respiratory depression. Yeah, yeah, Trump's Scott Gottlieb who resigned from the FDA, didn't he? Yeah. Um, he referred to this naturally wild growing plant as a street drug, claimed that he and the FDA are acting in the interest of protecting public health and will therefore attack a plant used by millions to enrich the police state foster the drug war, ensure a lifetime of profit for the pharmaceutical industry which has addicted the nation to its dangerous, extremely deadly synthetic opioids. So Ohio is now seeing raids. Anybody selling Kratom? The state is gonna shut you down. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. We are free at last, United States of America. Food crisis in the making for bankruptcies reaching horrifying levels. Total of 84 farms in the upper Midwest filed for bankruptcy between July 2017 and June 2018. Many are blaming Trump's trade war with China. China retaliated against those tariffs by slapping billions of dollars worth of tariffs on the United States. Agriculture exports in response to Trump's tariffs on Chinese products. Other countries, including Canada, have also added duties to U.S. agriculture products in response to Trump's tariffs on all imported steel and aluminum. So, those, this trade war, this, these tariffs, who is bearing the burden. Your average day American. But my hunch, these bankruptcies, many probably filed bankruptcy because of the flooding. Oh, those flash floods that destroyed the crops in the Midwest this year. Things have gotten so bad that the Trump administration launched a 12 billion aid package for U.S. farmers coping with retaliatory tariffs that foreign countries have imposed on their products. What? So, 
you impose these tariffs, they hurt so many of our industry. So now the American people have to fork up 12 billion to fork out to the agricultural industry. Does that sound like a sane plan? In September, the government cut 25 million worth of bailout to the agriculture industry. So you cut the bailouts, you impose these tariffs that have a great effect on the agriculture industry. So then you propose a 12 billion. This is our government is so bloody insane. And this kind of stuff goes on all the time. So uh, what <laughs> one Minnesota banker said, we're just waiting for a turnaround. We're waiting for the tariff problem to go away. It's the American way. Let's just wait. Let's just wait for all the problems to go away. Recall on dry dog food. Now a recall on raw beef. No, actually, it's an expansion of the recall expanded to 12 million pounds of beef, raw beef products from that are distributed by JBS Tolson Company. Um, 200 people got sick. I swear these recalls, I wonder if they're just trying to create food shortages. But this is a doozy. Yeah. Ready? Parents now are putting GPS ankle monitors on their teenagers like criminals. Wow. Good parenting, huh? Uh-huh. Court order is not required. Parents are increasingly turning to GPS monitoring to deter their children's risky behavior. The bracelet is near impossible to cut off, and it can sound a piercing alarm. Alarm! If a teen is out past curfew, well, the monitoring office, the employees in this office, they'll activate the ankle monitor speaker and tell the child it's time to get home. And if you don't, the police will be called on you. They will hear this godlike voice out of nowhere. Go home. Go home. Staff can also monitor the teen covertly and then report to the parent. And there's an optional hardened steel encased security cuff for high risk teens. It's only $10 a day. Parents, $300 per month. You can treat your child like a criminal. I'd say this country has changed. Not for the better. Yeah. Embarrassing a teen. No problem. Who cares? And if they don't want it to be seen, they can wear slacks. Yeah. Yeah, that's just what teenagers want to wear, slacks. Or looser jeans. An embarrassed child is better than someone's daughter running off with a guy who's going to eventually take her to a motel and beat her ass. Oh my god. Well, if your teen can't get home on time, um, what does that say about your parenting? If you need to use a GPS monitor on your teenager, my God, that says an awful lot about you, not your teenager. The electronic monitoring industry has more than doubled in size in recent years. And guess what? They're going for the college kids. That's right. There's a market. College kids. Um, they can wear an alcohol monitoring device, which will track the wearer's blood alcohol level through their sweat. We have a problem. Houston, 
and it ain't the sick elites. This has all manifested because Americans consent. If parents didn't buy these GPS monitors, there would be no market. There would be no market. We have become a truly sick, disturbed society. All links are below.